what is science? Thank you. Now, the reason I'm asking this is that uh, you've regularly been saying uh, this is a scientific argument, but uh, we have um, academic institutions and professional institutions around the world uh, coming out saying intelligent design, design is, is not, not science. science. Right. And I've heard so, that before. Yeah. <laughs> so there's something wrong here. We, right. we need some clarification Thank about you. what is science. Well, this is where, uh, uh, I, by the way, I have a colleague here, Douglas Axe, who's a protein chemist and molecular biologist, and he directs our, our lab. My background is in the philosophy of science. And it is the discipline of philosophy of science that addresses these questions of the definition of science. It turns out defining science is a notoriously difficult thing to do. It it's a semantic debate. It's a debate about definitions. And depending on how you define science, uh, you can either exclude or include within the designation of science uh, all manner of different theories and competing ideas. Darwin faced it, interestingly enough, in the 19th century. Herschel and others called his uh, theory of natural selection by random variation, the law of higgledy-piggledy. And they caricatured it as a non-scientific thing because it, did not, it was not based on a law-like process. It was strictly law-like. Um, and that's where he invoked and friends to the best explanation to defend himself. My case, uh, fundamentally, I don't care whether intelligent design is considered to be science or not. That is not the most important question. That is a semantic question. The most important question is whether it is true or whether it's likely to be true, or most likely to be true, given the evidence we have. What people have done to avoid answering that more fundamental question is repair to these semantic arguments. Oh, it's not true, because it, it's not, intelligent design is not science, therefore we don't have to consider the case for it. I don't think that follows. Whatever you call it, there is a compelling evidential argument for it. But I also think that using very basic understandings, uh, a very credible definition of science, uh, it, uh, typically, people want to demarcate science from non-science by invoking an understanding of, by, by, by reference to method. Science is different than non-science by reference to the methods it uses. Well, the case for intelligent design, and this is why I emphasize this in the lecture, is based on the very same method of reasoning that Darwin employed. So if you want to argue that intelligent design is not science, then applying that same criterion, that same yardstick, you will have to exclude Darwinism from consideration of, uh, uh, as a scientific theory. Now, I happen to think both are scientific theories. I happen to think chemical evolutionary theory, the actual opposite number of my case for intelligent design, is a scientific theory. The, the definitional question should not be dispositive. It, that's, that's just a matter of how you categorize an idea. That's not fundamentally interesting. What's fundamentally interesting is whether it's true or not. But the, the way people do this categorization is they're, they're called demarcation arguments. And they have, they're notorious in philosophy of science because they always fail. And, one, and let me illustrate. One of the simple demarcation criteria that's been offered is the idea of observability. If something's going to be a scientific theory, if a, if a theory is scientific, it must not invoke unobservable entities. Well, uh, ask Professor Josephson in theoretical physics about whether there are in, unobservable entities that ought to be part uh, of science. Or consider Darwinism. Darwinism invokes unobservable past events, transitional intermediate forms that are not observable, and yet it's, or, or past mutational events, not observable. If you make observation, observability, a strict criterion of being, a theory being scientific, we have to disqualify all kinds of theories that are considered scientific, including intelligent design. And so what I found is you, as you examine these demarcation criteria, what I found is that if you apply them very strictly, then not only intelligent design, but all competing evolutionary ideas are disqualified from consideration of science. If you apply them more realistically, taking into account the nature of the inquiry, that it's an historical scientific inquiry, then both intelligent design and competing evolutionary theories are, are properly considered to be scientific. So my, the, in short, the answer, I think the objection is a red herring, but if you take it seriously and, and, and let people define what they think science is, invariably, it does not do the work of settling the debate, of discriminating between one approach and another. So it, it, the biggest example of this was the federal judge in, uh, in the United States uh, in the Dover trial who wanted to disqualify intelligent design. He said it wasn't science. And I was asked in the media my thoughts on this. And I said, well, we actually don't look to federal judges to settle deep and imponderable questions about 
uh, the, the nature and definition of science. It's a, a different discipline is in charge of that. And uh, so anyway, that's my not so short answer.